Roebuck Rut, we're out in sunny Surrey after fighting deer. Kayak Bryn is hanging up his chef's apron and is out for some good old-fashioned pest control. We have news with a guest newsreader this week at last and hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. From a standing start in central London, you can be deer stalking faster and more cheaply than you can get a game of tennis or a game of golf. With the row rut imminent or maybe underway by the time you watch this, here's what happens when deer stalker Al Kamatov does just that. And here we are driving lovely uh, roads of the Surrey. Unbelievable thing is that this place is only uh, 40 miles from the centre of London. Of course, it's, uh, nobody really could expect that you can stalk deer in such a near proximity of the uh, London, but it's a big luxury. For example, today I was working in city and I left my office at Victoria at 5.30, so I arrived home at uh, 6.45, left home at 7, we've been here at 7.40 and uh, here we are, we're going out and uh, well, I'm sure we're going to be having the very resultive, very productive uh, stalking. So let's hope for the best. We have met Al before stalking Red Deer at Ardner Merchen with Neil Rowntree. This evening, Al meets up with Surrey-based stalking guide Matt Remnant at Cattershall Farm near Godalming. At this time of year, with the bucks showing themselves, Matt has plenty of stalking clients. Shall we? Excellent. Let's, okay. When you're ready, sir. Now we need buck. Yes. Standing broadside. Perfect. Beautifully for 20 minutes. <laughs> also. Tell me what happened yesterday. Well, up here? Yeah, no, 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 what you said, you're like, what happened? What, here? Yeah, you said, like, you took a client and... Yeah, 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 one of my Dutch friends came up and everything, uh -huh. and, uh, just, just, just wasn't quick enough. He could have had a lovely six-pointer up here, but he chased a doe, stopped twice, didn't shoot, and... He was thinking too much. He was waiting for the right shot. He knows that we're filming, you know. If a robot does that, we'll be happy. We will come back to Al's evening. First, let's meet Matt and his father David properly in the pub the following day. Like many of the stalkers who work in the green areas near Britain's biggest cities, they have a long history of deer management. And, uh, <clears throat> we know the ground very well. We have quite an area quite a large area. How big is the area we, or you, you manage deer at? Well, 3,000 acres. And be, we've been stalking deer here, yeah, properly with rifles, etc., for the last 55 years. 55 years, yeah. The remnants have more experience of deer stalking than most golf and tennis pros know about their games. Back to Al's stalking evening, and it is that experience which brings Al in contact with his first buck. still light and there are still bucks on the move. Matt takes Al to another field on this farm where he has seen some activity. The pair of them are in luck. Two bucks are fighting at one end of the field. Yeah, it's exactly the same. 
right. Get into it. Brutal. Two bucks fighting. We shot one. Another one was didn't know that we shot him. We think the second shot a bit behind. Maybe we're lucky we had a free box today. Let's go and see. Mac knows that that leap in the air is a classic heart shot reaction, and he's not surprised to find the buck a few feet into the woodland. It's adrenaline that carried it there. Al is delighted. This is bloody awesome. Three bucks. Gents, this is why I call Sari Buck Religion. <laughs> this one is old buck, yeah? This one is old buck. So. There's not many times you get opportunity to shoot two bucks fighting each other. Yeah. If you can shoot straight and you want to go deer stalking near London, we have put a list of stalking guides whom we know in the description of this film. If you're not a rifle shot, first take up the sport on one of the many rifle ranges around London. But above all, know this, it's fun, it's delicious, and you're doing the landscape and the local deer population a favour. Thank you, Al. Now, David is off to Africa this week with Paul, and apparently he can't get a lift into town to post us news. So we have Aaron, our podcast host, who has plonked himself onto the swiveling chair that is the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. An osprey chick has died after falling from its nest whilst being tagged by the RSPB. The wildlife charity says the incident in Huntley area of Aberdeenshire is a tragic error. Gamekeeping groups are questioning the legality of the RSPB officials handling wild birds. Small office provider WeWork are forcing its workers to become vegetarian. The company, which lets office space to businesses, has a new policy that bans employees from claiming expenses for meals that include poultry, pork or beef, nor will the company pay for meat at its events. Many of the workers are outraged. One of them agreed to talk to us, as long as we changed his voice. It should have been an informed debate where, you know, all um, opinions and viewpoints have, have a chance to get together and speak about the merits of various bits and pieces because they might, they might not even have a, an understanding or a concept of deer or, you know, that sort of stuff that actually benefits, you know, the environment to ensure that, you know, the land is kept raised in a sustainable way and, then, you know, the meat is actually used for good purpose as opposed to wasted. But there's a lot of sort of blinkered just generalisations that are being thrown around the company at the moment. This worker is planning to smuggle in venison burgers at the next company get-together later in the summer, and he says that he has the support of hungry colleagues. You may have heard that Tony Blair's Hunting Act is a great success, but it's very rarely used to prosecute the fox hunters it's aimed to ban. The Crown Prosecution Service uses it to prosecute poachers like 30-year-old Dean Sharat of Stoke-on-Trent in Staffordshire here in a hat using his dogs to catch hares in the Derbyshire High Peak. Derbyshire Rural Crime Team released these pictures taken by an amateur photographer on Facebook and tracked him down. He was fined £1,500 and ordered to pay £620 prosecution costs and a £150 surcharge. Animal rights activists reckon that they have a way of stopping the Wyoming grizzly bear hunt from taking place. A group of women, led by the chimpanzee conservationist Jane Goodall, has put in bids for the 12 bear tags on offer this season in Wyoming. Those who get a license must pay $602 US if they are from Wyoming and $6,002 if they are from outside Wyoming. Unfortunately for the women, more than 7,000 hunters have also applied for the tags, so their chances of winning are small. Whilst the glorious 12th of August is a special day in the British shooting calendar, in Jamaica it's the 18th of August. That's the opening of the Jamaican bird shooting season. The four birds that you can shoot in Jamaica are all pigeons. The pea dove, white winged dove, white crowned pigeon and the morning dove. You can shoot 15 to 20 a day depending on the species. This film shows the opening morning of the 2013 season. 
And finally, the Azerbaijan news service Azer News reports the latest hunting licensing figures. It reads, last season about 450 licenses were granted for hunting rabbits, 860 for water birds and the rest for hunting wild boars and the Dagestan tur. In addition, 240 licenses were granted for foreign tourists. Not a good year for taking a holiday in Azerbaijan then. You are now up to date with the Field Sports Channel news. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Yes. Thank you, Aaron. Now I have some news, and it is all about the game fair. I am back in the comfy chair on the stage at the Carter Jonas Game Fair Theatre this weekend, the 27th to the 29th of July 2018 at Ragley Hall in Warwickshire. 10am to 5pm every day I have a cornucopia, a constellation, a cartload of stars of the countryside joining me to talk about hunting, shooting and fishing. Friday highlights include Simon Whitehead and Scott Ray talking about their new rabbit bible, Basque's new chief executive Ian Bell is taking questions from the crowd, Robin Page will be his usual acerbic self and there is a fox calling competition at 3.30pm with the National Gamekeepers Organisation and Best Fox Call. We start Saturday with a big debate. Big bag days, and should we be shooting them? We have Patrick Galbraith from Shooting Time, Simon Hart MP, Sir Jim Pace from the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust, what we used to call the Game Conservancy, and sporting agent Mark Osborne. Later in the day, Peter Carr from The Shooting Show will be telling me about ptarmigan shooting, and at 2.30pm we have a horn-blowing competition brought to us by the Countryside Alliance. Highlights on Sunday include probably the best catapult shot in the world, Gamekeeper John, the new British Game Alliance on how they are marketing pheasant carcasses, and Chris Green on wildfowling, who will go on to judge our duck calling competition at 3.30pm. For all the competitions, visit bit.ly slash gftcomps. Plus, we have our own guys there on Sunday. It's Jason Doyle on Friday. It's Andy Crow, Tim Pilbeam, and it's Kai at Bryn. Details of all this on the screen. I will see you there. And next up, it is Kai working on his air gun accuracy. So I picked up the BSA Defiant Bullpup. I never shot a bullpup before. I'm more used to the conventional air rifles, so I'm looking forward to giving this a go. Since it's released at the British Shooting Show, they've actually lowered the rail, so it actually sits better in your cheek now. So it's more of a stable, shooting position. Called the Defiant and available in three stocks. This one's the black pepper laminate stock and we have it also available just here in the walnut and in the black soft touch. It's zeroed but David's found rummage in the back seat of my car this beautiful share certificate here, as you can see, neatly presented. David wants me to drill a hole in each of the O's to show how accurate this rifle is. So it's a bit of a challenge for me, and uh, let's see if we, can, uh, if we can do it. So the range is ready, and uh, we're gonna give it a go. So there's no fudging of this. If I mess up, it's down to me. I've got one shot at it. Well, I've actually got two shots at it. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's see what we can do. It has a brand new regulated system inside capable of 120 shots in 2.2 and 110 shots in 177 so a good shot count it's an enhanced cold hammer forged barrel inside this shroud with a silencer on the end as well is there any one of these in the world yeah that's true <clears throat> it's a worthy investment as well zero zero <sighs> let's go for it so we're shooting about 20 meters and, uh, yeah, they're zeroed. <laughs> okay, so I've got the O. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's hit the O at least. I'll try and get the other one. It looks like I've been a bit right on that last one. Should we take a look? Oh no, so close. Epic fail, Kayak Bryn. Ah! Uh, did you really doubt me, David? 
Did you really, really doubt me? <laughs> I can see. What's that of your shirt? <laughs> Hang on. It's my special Field Sports shareholder file. It's where I keep all my shares. Hold on a second. Let's have a look, shall we? Perfect. Tailor made. And there we go. Incorporated in the rear of the stock is BSA's 10 shot magazine system, which is the same magazine as we have in uh, other models, such as our R10, Ultras and Scorpions and so on, that's housed in here with a slight magnetic wall to hold it in, prevent it from falling out in the field. So far, I'm really impressed with the, the ball pipe. As you can see, it's really accurate. Everything is biased towards the back of the rifle. All the uh, action mechanisms and the magazine is behind the trigger. Is it short and compact like you? No, it's not short and compact like me. I'm five foot ten, which is the British average. Thank you very much. But yeah, the rifle is short and compact. It's ideal for urban pest control, getting into small spaces. I and mean, if you're shooting rabbits out at the car um, on your permission, then it's ideal for that too, because it's, you can get out the window and put it on a rest quite easy. Um, so it definitely has advantages. Um, like I said before, I'm used to the, the kind of the more standard sized rifles, the full length. But we're going to take it out this evening and see what we can do with it this evening too. I've done a bit of speed shooting before. I'm going to put 10 rounds in quick succession on the rabbit and see how we get on. Cocking lever is really easy to use and being left handed as well as right handed, a bit ambidextrous really. Um, I'm going to shoulder it on my left, have this on my right and see, uh, see how we get on with a bit of speed shooting on this rabbit. And actually, this is an ambidextrous stock, which is ideal. <laughs> I'm hitting it, but it's sticking and it's coming down. <laughs> yeah, you'll see, I was, I'm hitting it, but when I sit in the bottom one, it wasn't, it's not quite, it's, the mechanism is not quite right with the target, so uh, that's what I'm saying anyway. But, um, it's, it keeps sticking and it comes coming back down. So I'm hitting it, you can hear it go ding. So maybe we can get another target or use the same one. It's up to you, David. I don't know, as far as you're concerned, that's, um, is that, is that, you didn't have to take your eye basically to go for you. <coughs> no, it's, it's bang on. The rifle is bang on. So just come to one of my permissions. There's a few feral pigeons around. There's a, there's a duck barn at the back here. That's got a few feral pigeons try and take some of those pigeons out because they, <coughs> their guano falls onto the ducks and causes biological hazards. So we're going to try and get rid of those. And at the same time, there's a few rabbits pottering about and we might be able to thin some of those out for the farmer as well. So we just keep an eye out now for some feral pigeons. I'm trying to do it at night time because it's a bit better because they don't fly off so much. They're quite comfortable sitting where they are lofting. Um, so we've got the bushnell using just to spot them. And uh, on the rifle itself, I've got the night sight, my, my night sight eagle, which is pretty good. I was a bit concerned the night sight wouldn't fit, but it has, it has fit on there quite well actually, so I was quite pleased about that. Should have really tried it before we even got here, but quite lucky actually <laughs> that it's worked, worked out that it's, uh, it fits pretty well. One down. <laughs> Looks like I got him. Do you think it's probably more of a freehand <laughs> thing than a sticks thing? Yeah, but shooting freehand with this is is quite easy because it sits really close to your body. On the sticks, the weight is at the back. So using sticks normally, I prefer like a conventional rifle because the, the weight is more evenly spread. Um, but as you can see, it's not really been a problem this evening. I've got a few pigeons and a rabbit in the bag and um, I've got a couple more barns to do. So the night is still young. So we've got an old building on the farm. Never been into it. Looks like it could be a little bit creepy, David. So, uh, if I don't come back out, tell my mum I love her. <laughs> it's exactly this type of environment that a ball pup will hold its own because 
it's small and you can move around pretty easy. Um, whereas a more conventional rifle would, you know, you have to be more careful you don't snag it on things. That's for a hobbit. Luckily, I'm uh, only short, as you said earlier on, David. <laughs> I think that's all for this evening. We've got a few feral pigeons and a rabbit. We've been, we've been shooting here quite often, so we've been keeping tabs on what's going on, and we're doing a good job really controlling the numbers. So I'm really pleased with that. So the next stop are some rats at a friend's uh, garden, the chicken coop. So hopefully the uh, Defiant and the night site will uh, knock over a few rats for us this evening. Most of the time you get invited to people's gardens or their properties to so sort of a little bit of pest control. You, you come in here and it's, it's one of those things where you turn up when you can just be sitting around for hours and hours and hours because it's not really an epidemic. It's not a massive problem, but for a landowner, for somebody who's got chickens, it's a personal problem to them. So we try our best really to, to please them like this evening. Unfortunately, we're a bit defeated with technology and the fact that I haven't charged a battery up as long as I should have done so slap wrist to me really but I'll come back in a couple of nights time and hopefully fingers crossed we'll nail him thank you Kai and for more about shares and field sports channel go to fieldsportschannel.tv slash shares or if you're at the game fair this Saturday at Ragley Hall why not come along to the Cartagena's game fair theatre at 4 30 p.m where we'll be holding the field sports channel shareholders meeting all will be welcome now from the world of high finance to well the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube it is hunting YouTube This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Yorkshire Rose Stalking has put out three short films. There's this and another fox, plus Butterlow action on a roebuck. Potterick 81 Hunting is calling in this seven-year-old roebuck. The rut for him in Poland started amazingly early at the end of June. Tightly edited, GoPro Hunter puts up Monteria at Honochuelos in the Spanish province of Cordoba. Deer Mouflon and Wild Boar are on the menu. Matt Merrick Hunting is on his first trip to Australia's Northern Territory to hunt buffalo and scrub cattle, and he loves it. Staying down under, Scott Robinson Outdoors puts up two clips of Chital stags he's hunted. He's been carrying a video camera on hunts for the past 15 years. US youth hunting sensation Lunkers TV is thermal night vision hog hunting. It is his first hunt of the year in Texas. In Germany, there is nearly 10 minutes of chat from hunting Felix, then we get into a buck during the rut, which he shoots from a high seat. And finally, a quick one minute blue wing teal hunting in El Campo, Texas, part of the Emoji migration series on Mojo Outdoors. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. You can pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's out 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing. Perhaps see you at the game fair and goodbye. <laughs>